Okay, guys, uh, let's read febrile neutropenia guideline from the Green Book. Uh, it's very important. You have to know everything about it. Um, let's start. Uh, so, frequent clinical reassessment of patients is a vital part of effective management of febrile neutropenia in children. So, how we can know the child has a neutropenia? So the definition of febrile neutropenia, it's uh, temperature 38 or 38 centigrade or more at any time. Neutrophil count uh, 0.5 or less multiplied by 10 power 9 per liter. Okay, so that's what does it mean febrile neutropenia. So that's a temperature, high temperature, 38, uh, 38 centigrade or more at any time during the day. Um, neutrophil count less than um, 0.5 uh, multiplied by 10 power 9 per liter. So how you're going to manage a child with prior neutrophil It's known for you. He comes very often to your clinic and, you know, um, he is going to get um, 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 uh, feverish at any time. Okay, uh, so the immediate treatment, C fever 1, C, B, and F for those reduction in renal environment. Okay, we'll have a look on that later. Okay, for all patients with central venous axis, so Usually febrile, uh, usually the neutropenic patients, uh, uh, children, uh, they are known to the hematology clinic. They will uh, come very often to the outpatient clinic for the hematologist follow up from time uh, to time. Uh, they are very known and, and they usually have a central venous axis in place. Um, that's to get uh, treatment. Um, and to avoid puncturing them very often. So for all patients with central venous access, culture both humans or portacath. So you have to take a culture, swap, uh, swap for culture uh, from the lumen and the portacath. Take full blood count, group, and save because they may need blood transfusion or, uh, or uh, they need transfusion later on. So take full blood count, group, and save. Urea and electrolyte, lactate, blood gas, um, liver function test, CRP. If septic also do a coagulation screen, uh, BT and fibrinogen. So um, for all patients with central venous access, you have to take a swab for culture from the lumen uh, of the border cap, take full blood count, uh, group, blood group, uh, and save urea and, electro and, uh, and electrolyte, lactate, uh, blood gas, uh, liver function test, uh, CRP, uh, if septic, uh, if you are suspecting that he has sepsis, also do coagulation screening, uh, PT, a prothrombin pain time, and fibrinogen. Urine analysis in all children, that's basic. You have to do ur urine analysis for all children. Just x-ray only if respiratory signs. If he has respiratory signs, uh, he is coughing, he has shortness of breath, you do chest x-ray. Otherwise, I don't need to do that. For example, increased respiratory rate, ascultatory signs. Respiratory viral screen, if chorizal and or cough, um, nasal or uh, throat swab for viral screen. Do not wait for results to come up. Administer antibiotic immediately. Door to needle uh, time must be within uh, one hour. So if he doesn't have any um, 
uh, any IV access. So you have to get access within one hour and to start the antibiotic treatment immediately. Follow individual trust antibiotic policy or individual patient plan if resistant organisms. Okay, so that's what you have to do in all patients with central nervous with the central nervous access. Um, um, let's move to the um, the other option. That's if there is no hemodynamic compromise and not on chemotherapy block containing IV methotrexate. Okay. So if the patient hemodynamically uh, stable, uh, no hemodynamic compromise, and he is not taking any chemotherapy block containing IV methotrexate, he uh, like he is um, he is taking chemotherapy, but uh, he is not taking uh, methotrexate among this block. So in this case, um, and he is stable. In this case, uh, you will start the procellin with tazobactam, which is called tazosine. That's 90 milligram per kg, six hourly, administered over 30 minutes. So if the patient is hemodynamically stable and he is not taking uh, a chemotherapy block containing IV methotrexate, so um, you will start him on the tazosine that's 90 milligram per kg every six hour uh, administered over 30 minutes. Okay, the, uh, the next option that no, high, no hemodynamic compromise and on chemotherapy block containing IV methotrexate or penicillin allergic or previous tazosine resistant gram negative infection. So, and this type of patients, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> this type of patients, so they are stable, but they are taking chemotherapy block containing uh, IV methotrexate, or they are taking, uh, or they have uh, allergy to penicillin, um, and they, or they maybe have a tazosin, resistant gram-negative infection. So in this situation, what you gonna do? So in this situation, you, you will use mirubinim, uh, mirubinam 20 milligram per kg, eight hourly over five minutes. <clears throat> so in this in this situation, you will you will you will start him on mirubinam 20 milligram per kg, uh, eight hourly over five minutes. If previous documented MRSA infection, uh, which is MRSA stands for MRSA, which is methicillin resistant staph aureus infection, in this case, we have to add either ticoplanin, uh, um, uh, for three doses, uh, or vancomycin. We have to add on top ticoplanin or vancomycin um, don't worry about the doses you're going to check the bnf in your workplace um, and you, you you will not memorize any doses i guess um, uh, bredose vancomycin level uh, bredose vancomycin level before third dose and no post dose sample required so you have to check vancomycin level before the third dose, um, and you don't need to um, uh, check, check the post dose um, later. Adjust dose as followed, dependent on pre dose concentration. Uh, if less than 10, give six hourly and recheck level before dose four or five. If the level of vancomycin between 10 and 15, continue current dose and Recheck level in three and five days. If the level between 15 and 20, reduce dose by 10 to 20 percent and recheck level before dose four or five. Unless high level is advised by microbiology, 
if the vancomycin is in level more than 20 and less than 25 extend interval uh, to 12 hourly recheck level at 12 hour and give those without waiting for result if level more than 25 you have to stop vancomycin and recheck level after 24 hour to see if therapy can be restarted and to determine interval so this is in brief how you're gonna monitor the vancomycin dose because it's crucial you have to keep an eye on the vancomycin level due to um, he has you know it has um, a very serious side effect so you have to keep an eye on the level uh, okay so so far we have we have seen what we're gonna we have read that what we're gonna do for the all patients simply has access uh, for patients stable and they don't take um, a methotrexate in there with their chemotherapy block. And the third, third option that they are stable on chemotherapy containing iron methotrexate, or they may have penicillin allergy, or they have a tazosin resistant MRSA or a tazosin resistant um, gram negative infection. Uh, so we're gonna give mirobinam, uh, and we can, if there's MRSA infection, we add into opticoplan or vancomycin. We have to monitor the vancomycin level and keep an eye on side effect. Um, the next option that if, um, um, if the uh, patient hemodynamically compromised, um, in this situation, um, we have to check A, B, C, and initial appropriate resuscitation needed. Give sodium chloride a 0.9%, 20 ml per kg bolus. Uh, start mirubinam, 20 mg per kg, eight hourly over five minutes. Closely monitor urine output uh, may require high dependent unit or BQ care. So, this is the hemodynamically or unstable child or in shock. We will have to start ABC, uh, giving IV fluid, uh, starting a uh, mirubinam for him. <clears throat> and we have to uh, monitor the input output as well. Uh, he may need high dependence, dependence, dependence unit or PQ care. Um, Low risk patients, uh, no central access, and the neutrophil more than 0.5 multiplied by 10 power 9 cells per liter, and clinically well discussed with oncology team or um, on call consultant regarding discharge on oral antibiotic. So these are uh, low risk patients, that are clinically well, the neutrophil count more than 0.5. Um, multiplied by 10 power 9 cell per liter. So in this situation, you have to discuss with the oncology team or the oncol consultant the possibility to discharge him on, um, uh, on oral antibiotic at home. Subsequent treatment of brown neutropenia. So uh, we have to reassess the patient at 24 hours and chase blood cultures. So once you have started him on the antibiotic and you send him uh, his investigations to the lab, you have to chase the blood culture result. You have to reassess him at 24 hours as well. Um, positive cultures discuss patient with positive blood cultures with microbiologist or pediatric oncology team. For advice on appropriate treatment, where blood culture uh, positive for yeast and presence of suspected line uh, infection, remove lines promptly. Uh, okay, uh, give culture positive patients at least seven days treatment IV. So if you got um, culture positive uh, for uh, these patients, 
uh, at least seven days treatment uh, IV. Negative culture, do not switch initial antibiotic in patients with unresponsive fever unless there is clinical deterioration or uh, a microbiological indication. If the braille after uh, 48 hours from starting the antibiotic, repeat blood culture once again and discuss, and discuss with on-call consultant or pediatric oncology team. Consider changing antibiotic from tazosin to mirubinam, chase all culture scent on admission to, to identify source of infection, for example, either bacterial, viral, uh, swabs, urine, uh, microscopy, and uh, sense, uh, and sensitivity. If the braille after 96 hours or clinically unstable between 48 and 96 hours, initiate investigation for fungal infection. For example, you need to do ultrasound, abdomen, uh, or chest x-ray, or uh, a CT chest. Repeat the blood cultures again, add liposomal amphotericin, uh, 3 mg per kg per day over 36 minutes, give test dose uh, before that over 10 minutes, if profoundly neutropenic and after discussion with oncology team, uh, consider a GCSF, which is granulocyte colony stimulating factor 5, um, um, uh, sorry, colony stimulating uh, factor, uh, in a dose of 5 microgram per kg, subcutaneously once daily. Uh, it's given for non-leukemic patients only. I never give it to uh, a patient with leukemia. Uh, okay. Okay. And when to discharge, uh, if clinically well, and a febrile for uh, 24 hours or more and no growth in blood culture. After 48 hours, stop antibiotic. No need for routine and patient observation after stopping antibiotic. Okay, uh, so we said um, uh, when, to when to discharge, uh, if he is clinically well, uh, he is febrile for 24 hours or more and no growth in, uh, in blood culture. After 48 hours, you stop antibiotic, uh, no need for routine and patient observation after stopping antibiotic. Okay, we have the next page in here. It's the algorithm, uh, it's like um, a summary for what we have read so far. Uh, so measurement of fever in neutropenic immunocompromised child. So first of all, we have to assess the child. Uh, clinical assessment first, uh, and then we will do the investigation. The investigation basically is blood, uh, blood urine stool culture, other cultures as appropriate, uh, full blood count, group and safe, urea electrolytes, liver function tests, CRP, lactate. Uh, if uh, he is in sepsis, um, uh, prothrombin time, fibrinogen, uh, do not wait for results. Um, administer antibiotic within one hour of presentation. That's very important to uh, keep in mind. Um, okay, uh, then if uh, there is, um, if the patient hemodynamically compromised, if yes, check ABC, initiate appropriate resuscitation, give sodium chloride uh, 20 ml per kg, commence meropinam 20 mg per kg every eight hours, uh, inform senior, senior colleague, uh, monitor urine output. If he is not compromised, 
commence the Brazilian with tazobactam, tazocin, as we mentioned before, if penicillin allergy or receive IV methotrexate or previous tazocin resistant, uh, we use merobinam, 20 milligram per kg eight hourly. Uh, a stop prophylactic antibiotic apart from cotrimoxazole. Uh, uh, okay. Now, um, if a previous documented uh, MRSA infection, if yes, we add on top of the merobinam tilcoplanin uh, or vancomycin, uh, not uh, the two together, not the two medications together, whether tucoplanin or vancomycin. Okay, adjust according to the level. A target level is 10 to 15 milligram per liter. Uh, if there is no MRSA infection uh, and he is already on tazosin, um, we're going to reassess him at 48 hours, cultures uh, positive. If the culture is positive, discuss with the consult mic uh, consultant microbiologist or pediatric oncology uh, team for advice on appropriate treatment. If the culture is not positive, uh, continue, uh, continue, uh, but fever is still ongoing at 48 hours. What we're gonna do here, cultures are not positive, but he still has fever. We will continue the current antibiotic. Uh, do not routinely change antibiotic regime without discussing with the consultant. Uh, repeat uh, blood culture once again. If clinically concerned, change tazosin to merubina. Okay. If febrile 24 hours or more, if afebrile, sorry, if afebrile 24 hours or more and will stop antibiotic and discharge, if appropriate uh, oral antibiotic, you discharge an oral antibiotic uh, at home. Okay. Uh, Okay, if he got fever, continue, uh, fever is still going on for 96 hours. So in this situation, uh, initial investigation is for fungal infection. Think about fungal infection because they are immunocompromised patients. They are taking chemotherapy sometimes. Uh, for example, we need to do ultrasound, uh, ultrasound scan and or CT chest ultrasound abdomen and or a uh, chest CT scan. Add uh, um, uh, ampesome, which is amphotericin, only after discussion with the consultant. So that's the uh, febrile neutropenia guideline. I wish you like it. I wish you enjoyed it. And um, I wish it's helpful for all of you doctors. Um, uh, and good luck in your exams. And please pray for me as well. Um, and thank you for watching.